Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. The best show ever here on 97.5 The Fanatic, NBC Sports, Philadelphia. Uh, it was crazy weather outside, but it might be crazy in the sports world as well. 610-632-0975 is the number to participate. And let's get right to the word of the day. The word of the day today is prophecy. Because I, uh, I, I, I'm a sportsman from way back, as everyone already knows. And uh, I work with a bunch of sportsmen also on the program. And I had this prophecy that this week is going to be one of the most important sports weeks in these franchises' history this week. And it already started after I got the prophecy with Kevin Hayes being traded for a six-round pick to St. Louis at a salary dump. And the draft tomorrow, the Flyers, I, this week is one of the most important weeks in the last 50 years of the franchise. This is the most important week for the Flyers since Eric Lindros. That's how important this week is, and it's already off to me, in my opinion, a good start. Because, oh, well, what about what you got from Kevin? First of all, they weren't from a position of strength, if I may say. Everyone in the world knew they wanted to trade them because there's been a million leaks, and we'll get to all that going on with the Flyers. So that's step one. You're trying to trade a guy that everyone in the world knows you want to trade. Number two, he's way overpaid. And number three, you didn't want to take back any money. You can get more for Kevin Hayes if you're willing to take back a contract. What you did instead was you keep 50% of his money, which is basically a contract, and that's what you did. It was actually a good trade. Now, let's see what else they do. James Harden's going to opt out this week. That's going to be super important. This is going to be a very important week. Phillies Cubs, we'll see what goes, what goes down with that. This is going to be a big week. I'm telling you, the prophecy says, and it's been written. It's not me. I just read the prophecy. It's been read that this is going to be a very important week for our Philly sports team. I like what Danny Briere did today. I think it's a very strong move, and I get that it's not the most appealing thing in the world, but what you had to do was clean up Chuck Fletcher's garbage. He left this place a mess. It is an embarrassment how the franchise is right now. So you need to start stripping this thing clean, and it's not going to be beautiful. There's going to be times where you go, really, that's it? That's all you get in return? But this isn't all that's happening. What we really need to do is let this play out more. There was a lot of buzz circulating. The, the, the sports world that maybe Sanheim was included and there were other pieces which makes this feel less than what it is. Mm -hmm. Wait until Sanheim does get traded because he will be moved either today or tomorrow and then you look at the entire package of Danny Briere, five, six, seven moves of stripping this thing instead of one individually. Kevin Hayes, his time ran out here unfortunately. We thought at the time of the signing it would help push this thing forward but it didn't click with John Tortorella. They moved him from center to wing. There was a lot of internal frustration but if you look at what they're trying to do they're removing Ivan Provorov who did have some situations play out in the room moving mm -hmm. on from Kevin Hayes who wasn't the, the cleanest with relationships with the head coach Tony D is going to go back to Carolina in about a week or so they have an agenda they have a plan and, and I'm behind it I support it I like it and there should be no reason to be as frustrated as I see social media with the return for Hazy. I like it you have to start somewhere I think a lot of people don't understand this sometimes it doesn't matter what you get back in return and I think in this situation with the Kevin Hayes okay you got rid of half a contract that's money that you have now at least on, on your off of your books isn't that what this is all about getting back to state to to zero and then working your way back up as high as you could possibly go so I, I don't have any issues with what they're doing right now the Provorov thing I don't care D'Angelo that's that's going to be the same type thing maybe you get a little bit more than, than what you got for Hayes but still it's still a salary drop these guys are not trying Trying to make the world out of what out of nothing right now. I think what they're trying to do is break everything down to the simplest form that they could get it to, and then build it up their own way. That is what this is all about. And I think people out there saying, "Well, they only got this." Who cares? I mean, in all reality, who cares what you got back in a situation for for Kevin Hayes right now? I understand a lot of people like them. That's fair. But in, in this area and what's going on right now, it's clearing books that the Flyers are trying to do, and then they'll start with the draft and move on from there. I like what they're doing right now. I don't have a problem with it. If certain guys didn't get along with Tortorella, they're all going to be gone then. That's the way I look at this whole picture. Yeah, well, see, all right. I feel like this program, unlike some other ones, have been very friendly and welcoming to all the Flyers faithful. We're going to have, and I'm going to need Jen Scordo's help because I'm not good with feelings. 
the, the every single fan that's complaining about the return are complaining about the return for one of two reasons. Either one, they don't want to accept the rebuild, and they want to get a good player in return or a first-round pick in return because they don't recognize where the Flyers really are. And I'm here to help any Flyers fan that is in has a look at this point. If you think that you're delusional, but there are delusional fans out there who believe that they're one or two moves away and some health to being right back in the mix. So while the majority of fans recognize the direction they need to go, that's not all the fans. And everyone that's complaining about the hall is going, well, hold on. If you just get rid of Hayes and bring back a young guy, They'll mess around and make the playoffs next year. When they make the playoffs, you never know what can happen. That's still out there. And that's then adorable. And that's funny, huh? That's out there. And then the other part that's still out there is, uh, okay, I really like what Danny Breer has done so far. I really like what Keith Jones has done so far. I don't like hearing so much about it because the way they've set up their, their situation when you hear about, as you talked about, Hunter, when a fan hears this is going to happen. So it'd be like this. Your parents decide they're going to take you to Disney World. Oh, my goodness, you're so excited. Then you find out that you are going to Florida, but you're only going to the beach to visit Grandma. That's awesome. But you had Disney World in your mind. Yep. So now Grandma Mom's house at the beach in St. Petersburg isn't good because you thought you were getting Disney World. The Flyers have let this this young group, this inexperienced group, so many things leak. There are fans out there that are expecting Disney World, and when they get anything other than Disney World, then it's, quote, horrendous, as somebody on, on hold is going to say, and we'll talk to them later on. And I think the Flyers themselves need to tighten that room up so that St. Petersburg to see your grandparents doesn't end up looking horrendous because it's not Disney. Right, they do. And this is all part of the job, and Danny Briere is very new at this. Now, there's some yeah. savviness that I really do love, oh, and yeah. I've seen it in the first trade so far mm-hmm. made by the Flyers. He is creative, and he's willing to go out there and add a third team and take on money and try and find ways, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. I do think that there's some things leaking here that need to be cleaned up. And Keith Jones mentioned some things weren't true that were being reported. They were trying to put toothpaste back in the tube. Uh-huh. They know exactly what happened. But it's all a learning experience. We do have to acknowledge that there's going to be good things and bad things that happen when you're dealing with a lot of inexperience. Now, I got to ask you if I'm crazy or not, because Elliot Friedman was reporting, and this could be me being nuts, I I will admit. Uh He's reporting that, uh, okay, so Tory Krug for the St. Louis Blues had a no-trade clause. And he's the reason why more stuff did. This weekend, yesterday would have been all flyers, if not for what you're about to do. Correct. So he decided to not waive his no-trade clause, which, it, fine, I wouldn't want to be a 30-plus-year-old defenseman trying to be a good <laughs> guy in the room for the rest of my career. No. I want to win a damn Stanley Cup. So apparently, John LeClaire, who's a new hire, uh-huh. was going to call him and try and convince him to waive that no-trade clause. That's what the inexperienced John LeClaire's job was supposed to be. Well, he failed because Tory Crew Obviously. said today to St. Louis, it ain't happening. Right. What the hell is John LeClaire here for? Well, oh, well he had the same agent as Krug did. It, that, that's right, so, that's oh, the connection. Yes. Well, what's, what's, what's his, if he can't get this one done, what the hell is John well, LeClaire here on, for? Hold on, hold on. I go. told you, maybe I'm see, nuts. See, this go. is why we go to Jen. Oh, the feelings. I, I don't have a choice, Jen. It's not that you can only do feelings. <laughs> right. It's that you're the only one here that can who do can do feelings. I got gotcha. you. So you have Flyers fans who hear over the weekend, oh, my goodness, 2019 blockbuster. Everybody <laughs> must go. Like, this is what you're hearing over the weekend. And then instead, the first move you actually get after that is six-round pick for Kevin Hayes. Yeah. And now they go, ooh, how do we, because we, we're a welcoming group. We, yes. we, we're four, We're five for five for real. We don't just say it. We really love all the teams. Yes. How do we convey to the fans that we understand their frustration, that but perhaps it's a little bit misguided. And at the same time, the Flyers are making some mistakes in their execution by getting the fans' hopes up too too high too quickly. Too quickly. Yeah. Uh, we might have to have a therapy Tuesday 
Oh. With some of these Flyers fans to just have a little patience, maybe a little meditation, oh. a little free flow of the brain, of the mind to say, OK, just settle down, slow down. It's a good start. It's the tip of the iceberg. There is more to come. That ice is going to start rolling down the hill and there's a lot more to come. This is just the beginning. and It's OK. Just step back. Take a deep breath. See, you just we'll get there. You hear what Jay just said? There it is. You heard what Jay just said? Hunter can't that's, do that's it. That's nothing for you, Hunter. That sounded great to me. I, no. I don't know. Somebody had to clean up Chuck Fletcher's mess. That's what's happening right now. Well, There's the a f- big garbage dumpster yeah. left it's, in the Wells it, Fargo it, Center, he, and they're cleaning it out. He didn't have any black char- garbage See, bags. there you go. So over the weekend, he was trying to take it out with the kitchen bag, and the kitchen bag ripped. So now it's all the ground again. It's all the ground, so he's got to just go get the other trash bags to get the stuff. That's all, yeah. Here's my final question over our opening segment. These Flyers fans that are disappointed with the six-round yeah, return. Yeah, we're going to talk to them today. Didn't they hate Kevin Hayes? Yes, they did. Like, didn't they I'm say sure he stinks, did. he's overrated, his contract uh-huh, is too uh-huh. much? Well, then what the hell did you think you were going to get in return? Oh, You're trying wait. to be logical uh, over there. Uh, Come on. What do you mean? Most <laughs> pundits, I have people already telling you, most pundits are going to give this thing an F-. minus. Wait until Sandheim goes. I think they actually get, for some reason, the league values Sandheim way more than I thought they would. And guess what? I'm here for it. Danny could probably get something for Sandheim. For Hazy, no shot. And it is what it is. That's the market. That's the market. And when you've been trying to trade a guy for two years, though you don't have a lot of value. A guy who makes way too much money, who your coach doesn't like, that you've been actively trying to trade for two years, sometimes you get what you get. 610-632-0975. We're talk about all the sports today, okay? We have a prophecy. This week's going to be big. Very, very big. From NBC Sports Philadelphia. We'll talk to Jordan Hall around 4 o'clock, unless there's some more moves, and then he has to jump around with the time in case some other things pop off, but we'll talk to him 4 o'clock today. This is just the beginning, people. And we're here. We I'm making this clear. All fans are welcome on this program. But we have to make sure... We keep things under control because it's going to be a big week. You got a draft tomorrow. All right, we'll be back here on 97.5 The Fanatic, NBC Sports, Philadelphia.